If you're looking to create a Minecraft server, you may have tried using a free service before. And as great as those services are, there are limitations on both the hardware and software. So instead of using that, you can set up your server with something like this, an old PC that you may have lying around. And I will show you guys exactly how to set it up. So let's get right into it. So first let's talk about this PC here. This is the Dell Optiplex 3010. It has an i5-3470, 8 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, and a 128 gigabyte SSD. These specs are really not that great, but for hosting a small Minecraft server with friends, it should get the job done. But for you guys, if your PC has similar specs to this, you should be able to get decent performance on your server. We are going to be using Windows, but you can even use an old Mac or Linux PC if that is what you got. If you don't have a PC at all though, you can purchase one for super cheap on either eBay or on the used market. I would recommend getting one with a newer CPU, something like a 6th gen Intel chip, but if that's not in your budget, anything with an i5 4th gen or newer and at least 8 gigabytes of RAM should be sufficient. I will leave links below to some options on eBay for different price ranges to make it easy. But now that we got the PC in place, let's get into setting this up. All right, so now that we are in Windows, we are going to first install Java because this is a requirement or else our server will simply not start up. So I'll leave a link in the description below and you're going to simply download it and go through the setup process. Once that is done, we are now going to download the server jar. We will be using Paper MC. This is a custom server jar that is more stable, has more optimizations, but also gives us the option to install plugins, which I will get into a little bit later. So we are going to download the jar from the official Paper website and we will get the one with the latest Minecraft version. Once we have this downloaded, we are going to create a folder called Minecraft Server, but you can name this whatever you want and put this folder anywhere on your PC. Then we are going to take the paper jar and put it into this folder. We are going to rename the paper jar to Server and then double click on it to open it up. This will generate a few files in the folder, but nothing should actually open up. We are then going to open this file eula.txt and we are going to switch to eula equals false to true. Now we can press on the server jar again and the server panel should pop up after a couple of seconds. So technically our server is already up and running. If we go onto Minecraft and try to connect, it will work. But we are going to make a few more changes before we get into that. So the next thing that we're going to do is set up a run.bat file. This will allow us to allocate how much RAM we are going to give the server. And if the jar wasn't opening previously, this should fix that. We are going to go back to the server folder, right click, go to new and create a text document. Name it run.txt. Open it up and add this following text, java-xmx and here we are going to allocate how much RAM we want. So for example, if I wanted to have four gigabytes, I would simply put four G. But in this instance, I will allocate six gigabytes, so I will put six G. Then add in dash jar, server.jar, and press enter two times, and add in pause in all caps. I will leave this text in the description, so you can simply copy and paste it into your document. After you do that, you can press file, save as, rename this to run.bat, and switch .txt to all all files and press save. Now we can delete the original run.txt file and then we can double click on the bat file and the server panel should show up now. Okay, so our server is now set up, but now we have to allow our friends to actually join it. So we are going to use a service called playit.gg. This will allow us to create a terminal that our friends can join without having to port forward. So we are going to head onto the website, which will be linked below again and press on download. We will select the Windows installer and run the program to get it set up. But quick disclaimer, I would only recommend using this service if you're looking to just set up a server with a couple of your friends. When people join your server, they are technically joining your network. Your network most likely has no DDoS protection or enough bandwidth to handle a ton of players. So make sure that you keep this in mind. But back to the installation, after you go through the process, you should be greeted with a text document with a link in it. But if not, you can go simply open up playa.gg in the search bar and it should show up then. Copy this link and paste it into your browser. It will bring you to this page where you can create an account but for this video I will be using a guest account. Now the first three steps should be checked off so we can press on create a tunnel. We will be brought to this page where we will leave the region to global anycast and for tunnel type we will select Minecraft Java then press on add tunnel. After all this our server is ready to go so what we can do is copy this IP head on to our game and connect directly to it and as you can see our server is up and running and we can now join. You can simply 
share this IP with your friends, but just remember only give this to people you fully trust. But now that this is set up, I will go over a couple of things that you can do. To give you access to all of your commands, I would recommend making yourself an operator, which you can do from the server panel by typing in op and then your username. If you're looking to change some basic settings like the game mode, view distance, difficulty, you can adjust all that in the server.properties file in your server folder. Also, if you're looking to add something like a custom world, simply download it from the website it's on, delete the previous world folder, place the new folder into the Minecraft server folder and rename it to world. As long as the world version is set as the same version as the server, everything should just run fine. Now let's get into the fun stuff though, which is plugins. So plugins will allow you to add a ton of extra features to your server. For example, you can add plugins like Terra world generation, which will generate a world with custom and unique biomes. There's also ones like world edit, din map, via version, and so much more. If you're interested in learning more, I will leave links below, which you can check out. Okay, but now that we have everything set up, your server should be good to go and you can start playing with your friends right away. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you guys all in the next one.